The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is a game about exploration and discovery. Within your first hour, you're given all the tools you need to explore and have the freedom to go wherever, whenever. Mechanically, it incorporates modern open world game design, blending it with Zelda motifs. Every edition of the series has always differed in style, gameplay, and theme, but Breath of the Wilds revolutionized the series in a way that we haven't actually seen since the Ocarina of Time on the Nintendo 64. It's bold, ambitious, and, no pun intended, breathtaking. Every little minute detail of my interaction with the world, for instance, throwing a bomb towards an enemy and having them realize a bomb has been thrown and then reacting by throwing it back at me, to walking through a thunderstorm and having my metal equipment conduct electricity, striking a bolt right at me, killing me instantly. Everything about Breath of the Wild feels like it's grounded in some sense of reality. Exploration and narrative progression is player driven, meaning you can choose whatever order you wish to complete the dungeons, whether you want to go in to do small side quests, whether you want to actually explore giant chunks of the world, or simply go straight towards Ganon and finish the game. Giving control to the player is not only something we haven't really seen in a Zelda game before, but is also something that creates an authentic water cooling effect that, again, we haven't seen in the series. Sharing my experience with friends who've also played the game, I noticed that no two experiences are ever the same. Whether intentional or not, Nintendo has fantastically created a network of players unraveling secrets to the game even now, a month after it's come out. The four main environmental based dungeons play with certain environmental effects, gravity and architecture in a very engaging way, but what works best are shrines. Shrines are short brain teasing trials found throughout the map that test your skills in combat, platforming and critical thinking. Despite being incredibly short, these trials are actually my favourite part of Breath of the Wild. Collectibles have always been a thing in Zelda, but here, they feel like they naturally belong in the world. In this way, Breath of the Wild has solved an issue I've always had with open world games. My immersion in open world games is often ruined by listicle objectives and waypoints, really lack any sense of realism and clutter the map. But the way that Breath of the Wild deals with these sort of objectives is that they show up on your map after discovering them and feel like accomplishments rather than a to-do list. Of course, there are collectibles in Breath of the Wild that, while contextual, do feel endless, but it never felt like the game was guiding me towards them. In fact, the ability to climb any mountain and truly go anywhere you see on the map has significantly changed how I see open world games. Having a guided path and being unable to climb anywhere in an open world environment now feels stale and forcefully linear. There's a lot more to Breath of the Wild than I've mentioned, such as voice acting for the first time in the series' as history. I ask of you, when he returns, can you please relay this message? a deeper strategic combat system, crafting, and a durability system that I actually didn't mind. But what it excels at best is exploration and discovery. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is a game we'll look back on for excellent level design and handheld free puzzle solving. Nintendo has set a new benchmark in the open world genre with fantastic open world environments, intelligent reactive AI, and puzzle solving that treats you like an intelligent player. Good. 
It's not only the best game of the series, but as of right now, as someone who hasn't played Nier Automata and most of Persona 5, it's easily the most enjoyable and mechanically innovative game of the year. 